Hi there. I think I'm live right now. Live from Amsterdam. Uh, happy to be in uh, this conference. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, we're right now in uh, the uh, fire station Duivendrecht. It's one of the stations uh, in the Amsterdam region. Um, I want to talk to you about uh, how Home Assistant can help save lives. And uh, I made a, a short presentation for you guys. I want to tell you a little bit about uh, the fire department in Holland and especially here in Amsterdam. Uh, in the whole of Holland, we have about 30,000 uh, people who are working for the fire uh, service. And uh, 25,000 of these people are uh, actually in the, in the service of fighting the actual fire. The rest is uh, in the offices and in all kinds of departments. And of this 25,000 people in Holland, about 80% is a volunteer. So uh, a large part of the community of the uh, fire department is working as a volunteer to help fight fires. And here in Amsterdam, it's almost the other way around. We have like 70% uh, professional firefighters for it's a big city, they have to work a lot. And there are a couple of small fire stations. They make up about 30% of the, all the, uh, the firefighters in this region. And this uh, fire station that you see here is one of the smaller uh, fire stations. And uh, we make up this uh, 30%. Well, oh, well, we are having a call right now. So it may get a little bit busy in a little bit, but um, I, I see it's not a really urgent call. We're, uh, we're going to have uh, a car leaving in a bit, but that's okay, I think. Um, let me tell you a little about, bit about how the fire service works. Sometimes you have an emergency, you have a fire. That's uh, quite obvious, but we have other things. We have, uh, for instance, we, we help with calamity, uh, casualties, we help with uh, uh, water incidents. We're in Holland, there's a lot of water, so there's a lot of incidents involving water, cars uh, getting into the water or people just falling off uh, the, the side of the canals. So we have a lot of different incidents. What happens? They call 112 in Holland. It's the, the uh, version of 911 in uh, the States. Uh, if they call 112, they get connected to dispatch and dispatch uh, fires the emergency call. The emergency call comes to us as uh, firefighters, but especially the volunteers on our old fashioned pagers. We get a message saying what kind of emergency there is and uh, we have to get to the fire station as soon as possible. Well, this is really the old fashioned way, but it still works like that. And uh, nowadays uh, the emergency system is connected to another system. It's called Brandweer Rooster or also known as, oh, we have a bit of a, I'll try and continue a bit. It can be a bit noisy in the back, but don't let that disturb you. Anyway, we have uh, the system called fire. This is what happens in a fire station. So I can't help that. It doesn't take long, I hope. This is actually one of our biggest trucks here. It's, it's being used for uh, huge water transport. In the back, you see the ordinary uh, uh, fire fighting uh, vehicle. But this one is the bigger uh, version. Okay. I think the door will, it will close by itself. Let me continue. Um, we have a system in Holland and it's connected to uh, the, the dispatch. It's called Brandweer Rooster, also known as uh, Fire Service Rota, because this system is not only working in Holland, it's also working across the border. And uh, it, it's quite smart. It's, it's much more advanced than the old fashioned pagers. So what it does, it sends a message to our 
uh, cell phone, and it gives us more info about uh, the about, about the incident. And we can actually tap a button in uh, the app to say that we're coming to the station, so they know how many firefighters are on their way. Soon we're going to work with the smart pager as well, so we'll have some more functionality on the smart pager. We can actually press a button there and people know that we're coming as well. But it made me think because I was involved with home automation a bit. I got to know Home Assistant and I thought, well, there's a possibility here because it would be great if I would know that I have an incident and have my house react on that. Um, just reading the notes here from the 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 from the uh, backstage, but uh, but it's okay. Uh, I wanted to know: is it possible to have my home react on a fire incident? And there's a, plenty of stuff you can do if you, if you know that there's an incident. There can be a light that is switched on, or I could have all kinds of info on a screen in my home. I could have the alarm being switched off, and who knows, maybe it's possible to unlock my car when, when I go to the fire station. I, I want to lose as little time as possible or maybe even start the car. Who knows? So I was looking into Home Assistant. And I was thinking, could I use this? Could I work with that? And it was actually not that simple. I'm actually myself an actor doesn't look like this it looks like i'm a fireman but i'm a volunteer uh, fireman so i do this on the side my ordinary job is an actor so i can act i can do uh, i can be a firefighter but i'm not a programmer so i was thinking i have to find someone who can help me with that and running around on the internet i found someone who could do that and who could make code for me so who did I find? I found Mr. Cyber Junkie. Nice name, nice guy. He's helped me a great lot. Not, on, not only with uh, this uh, system, but also a lot of other stuff. Uh, and he was quite well known already for two uh, big integrations. He has an official integration for Polar in the Home Assistant app. And also he has an unofficial uh, integration for P2000. P2000 is the paging system in Holland, and it's used to send uh, SMSs and pager messages to our pagers. And I was thinking, well, he knows a lot about it already. Maybe he can help me. And he was very nice. He wanted to help me. So uh, what we did was we looked into that first, but it was actually not so fast because we had to get all these messages from uh, uh, the system first, and we wanted to go straight into the system of Fire Service Rota, also known as Brandweer Rooster. And there was actually a way, uh, as uh, Paulus was saying, we found uh, the API, and the people of Brandweer Rooster were nice enough to help us with that. So what we built is the following: we uh, we connected into the API for Brandweer Rooster. We have a web, web socket connection, it's called, and we get the incidents. So we get a lot of data from the incidents, but we also get more info than that. We get to know if someone is on duty or not. So it's on or off. And we have a switch that can say, uh, can, can you come to the, to the station? So it's called the incident response. Well, all of this, uh, can be used, of course, in un unknown uh, ways before everyone can use it in its own matter. But uh, Cyber Junkie built this uh, interface and he uh, made this interface work like it can be uh, shown in a small screen, the Google Nest Hub. So if you have a Google Nest Hub, you can actually show this on the screen of your Google Nest. This is what it looks like. It's not very big. I don't think you can see it very well, but it has a map where the incident takes place. It has a list of all old incidents and it can actually speak the incident text, which is very useful 
because uh, it's also very nice if we can hear these incidents and don't have to read them because we're on our way to the fire station. Let me check if I have to do something else. No, I think we're okay still. Um, so I hear you think, what good is this to me? Because yeah, this is home assistant and uh, I'm not a firefighter. What good is it? Yeah, that's true. This is actually a system that's only useful for firefighters, but it's useful in a very uh, interesting way because what we do, we win a lot of time and we win precious seconds. We have uh, such a good connection with uh, Brandweer Rooster, also known as uh, Fire Service Rota, that we actually get the messages before they come to our pages. And that's what makes a hell of a difference because we can leave our house earlier than before. And that's sometimes 10 seconds, up to 15 seconds before the uh, message comes on our pager. And these seconds can make a difference between life and death. So in a way, you have a lot of uh, profit from the system, although you'll probably never be able to use it. But it's nice to know that it's possible with Home Assistant. There's a lot possible with that. Well, and now that I have your attention, I want to talk about something else because a lot of home automation is always about light, about comfort and whatever. But I think one of the things that you have to think about is safety in your house. So I want to emphasize that when you start home automating, start with smoke detectors and carbon monoxide detectors, integrate them into your smart home because it can make a big difference for the life of you and your loved ones. And uh, I think it should be the first thing to install. Well, that's about it for me. I uh, hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I hope you didn't have too much noise in the back. And uh, I hope to see you around. I'll stick around for a Q&A. And uh, I wish you a pleasant evening. Thanks for your time.